Hello and welcome to the first video of our tutorial series uh, aimed at developing custom tiles for marching cubes uh, algorithm. Um, if you haven't seen the intro video for this course, um, I would definitely suggest you do, because then you'll see what kind of output you might expect from this series of tutorials. Um, so first of all, I'm going to, uh, to talk about the marching cubes algorithm in itself a little bit. Um, basically, um, what this algorithm does, it wraps a point cloud with a mesh, right? And it um, it's a very fast way of uh, generating very heavy meshes and a very fast way of manipulating heavy, heavy meshes. Um, the way it works, it's basically it has a this kind of library, uh, do we have a better picture? Oh, no, yeah, there we go. It has a library of 15 tiles <clears throat> and it chooses uh, which tile fits um, any given uh, voxel in space uh, according to what kind of um, points um, surround that tile, right? Um, to give you an example, um, let's go to Rhino to, to give you an example. Let's say you have a single point in space, right? And it's a voxelized space, meaning that it's um, it, it, it contains um, these voxels. And let's say our world is just... Um, Point. Our world is just two by two voxels in size, something like that. Copy that real quick. Copy that. Okay. So we have something like this, right? And that this is our uh, voxelized world. Think uh, Minecraft, right? something like that. Um, let me just make it into a wireframe, lock it in place, delete all the voxels. Okay. So if we have something like this, right, and we only have one point, then we can check in this library what kind of tile works for each of these voxels, right? And keep in mind that uh, these tiles, they uh, can be rotated and mirrored. So um, this triangle right here can also be in this part here. Um, so in total, we have eight voxels here, right? And each of them has only a single corner on <clears throat> a single point on one of their corners, right? <clears throat> so that means that it's always going to be tile number one that's going to be implemented here. And the way it, it would work is, let me just copy from point to point like that. So this tile right here, we don't even need to change anything. It would just work like that, right? Um, this tile right here would be a mirrored version of this one. So I can just mirror it like that. Mirror to those two like that. And mirror like that. So this um, single point gets wrapped with um, eight type one tiles, right? And, and we get the closed, uh, in this case, NURBS polysurface, but uh, in, in, in the case of marching cubes, you'll, you usually get a closed mesh. So the takeaway from this is that you will always get either one or, or several closed meshes uh, by, by implementing this kind of a marching cubes approach, uh, which is really nice for 3D printing and also for just generating clean geometry. Right. Um, so then the question is what happens if we just change the tile, right? 
because we can do that. Before we start messing with it, um, just unlock real quick, delete that. Um, before we start uh, cha changing the tiles, we should, um, I, maybe I'll talk about what uh, kind of um, uses Marching Cubes algorithm has. Um, so first of all, it's used in forensics and in MRI scans. So, uh, oops, Mr. Scan, <laughs> MRI scan. Um, so basically an MRI scan, the way it works, it makes a bunch of slices, right? A bunch of X-ray slices. Um, all of these slices are JPEG images, right? Which have pixels. And if you stack these slices on top of each other, they become 3D pixels, which is a voxel. And as long as something is a voxel and has a value, and in this case, a, the tissue has a value, like um, if it's dense, it's brighter. If it's uh, less dense, it's darker. So as long as there's a value and there's a voxel, that means you can start interpolating um, marching cubes elements or, or, or tiles, I'll call them tiles, you, you are able to use the marching cubes algorithm on, on series of these slices to recreate uh, 3D, a 3D image, right? So that's one, one use of it. Uh, medical. Another use, which is a bit, I guess, closer to most of us, is um, sculpting, digital sculpting. Um, so there's, uh, there are like two main programs that do this, uh, ZBrush and Blender. Um, so I'll, I'll just show it in Blender. Like, let me just create a new um, new file sculpting. There we go. So the way sculpting works in, in, in Blender is if I were to start start messing with this, right? Um, you can see how it starts generating uh, additional polygons and moving these polygons with ease, right? Um, Marching cubes, like the, the the fact that we're using voxels, really helps. <laughs> um, the fact that we're using voxels really helps uh, with managing how many um, how many polygons we have, right? And how many polygons we can deal with. Oop, that, that's a mistake. Um, which means that. For, for sculpting purposes, this is definitely a, 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 a very, very strong tool. And also a really fun tool as well. Um, I don't know what I made. Let me just make this like that. <laughs> um, and the, 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 the cool part is that if I were to zoom in and start sculpting as I'm zoomed in, it can change the size of some of the voxels. And this is not definitely not implemented in, um, in Rhino or, or in Grasshopper. Uh, but this is a very, very cool feature. Of course, if I zoom out and then brush over it, it's going to mess it up again, right? Um, because voxels change size, but it's a, it's a really nice little, um, little tool. Okay. So that, that's, a little bit about sculpting. Um, so the way we're going to use marching cubes is, is purely um, like we're just going to use bare bones of it. Right? Uh, we're not going to implement any of the more fancy features and we're going to break it down. So the first thing to do is uh, to prepare a library for ourselves that we're going to use and uh, that um, to, to build up some sort of a form. 
Um, so I'm going to, in, in this video and in the next video, I'm just going to show you how I create, let's say, um, two elements with completely different styles, right? So uh, in, in, in this video, I'm just going to work on, on this triangle element right here um, and, and make it three dimensional. Um, so things to think about are how do these styles, how do these elements touch each other, right? So let's say if I were to stack uh, tile number number two with tile number uh, three, you can see that this edge and this edge, they meet, right? So if you look closely at it and analyze it, there's only two ways of how they can connect, right? And uh, I have this kind of guide here. There we go, connection guide. So these are two ways on how the tile can touch, on how the tile can touch a surface, right? Uh, a surface of a voxel, sorry. Um, so if I were to say like tile number one, let me just make a copy of this. Um, it's It always touches it at an angle, right? So I'll just get rid of this part right here. Let's just see. So if I were to rotate this like that, and then let's just make a quick copy of it, rotate it like that, actually mirror it. Don't copy like this. <clears throat> so what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm preparing um, the edges, right? The, the the guiding edges on how the tile is going to touch, or yeah, how the tile is going to touch the voxel. Um, and I'll just mirror it again, but this time at an angle, like this. Oops. Mirror copy. There we go. <clears throat> so I have something like this, right? And don't mind the screws. Um, these are just for uh, size reference. These should be um, if it's if it gets scaled up to. No, I, I think it's four millimeter diameter screws um, let me just hide those okay so we have something like this so the first thing is to block it out right to give it thickness i already in, in my guides i have already uh wrote down what kind of or, or drawn out what kind of thickness i'll want right so all i need to do is just grab a surface tool and i'll just click 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 Let's just make one triangle and I'll just make another in the bottom here, here and here. So something like this. Then I'll just duplicate border, loft between the two borders and then I can join everything up into one closed thickened triangle okay so that's that I, I have a plate to work on um, these parts they are connections right and the, the, the thing is that um, as long as the connections are symmetrical uh, where's the midpoint as long as the connections are symmetric this one and this one has the same gap from the midpoint um, the tiles will match up perfectly um, so the, the way I've, I'm, I'm modeling it out is I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say um, let's just make a rectangle and all I need to do is just uh, I, I just need to create one of them uh, don't, don't need to do more 
So I'll just make a three point rectangle from here to here to here, something like this. Let me just scale it up, scale 1D from here to here, something like that. So I have this rectangle and I have this uh, circle. For, no uh, for now, I won't uh, do anything with the circle. I'll just make this rectangle into a block. So, uh, not boundary box, uh, boundary, no, uh, planner, planner surface. Sorry about that. Uh, planner surface. Um, and let's just give it some, uh, some thickness. This is where scale comes in handy, like having the screw for scale, where it comes in handy. So thickness. This is in centimeters and this is 10 centimeters. So I'll just, uh, the edge of a voxel is 10 centimeters. So I'll just go for one. Ooh, no, not one. Um, 0.3. Yeah, something like this seems fine. Um, three millimeters. Yeah, that, that should be, once it's 3D printed, it should be strong enough. Um, so I have blocked out my connection. Um, I'll also grab the curve and extrude it. Extrude the, this kind of circular opening for the screw to go in. Solid, yes. Delete and put, yes. And I'll just make it... Uh, if that was 3 millimeters, I'll just make it um, 5. Oh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 centimeters. <clears throat> okay, something like this. And the last bit is going to be show selected. The, 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 the screw, no, not the screw, bolt. The nut, the, the nut itself. I'm just going to place it somewhere here. And then I'm going to um, align the screw, uh, sorry, the nut with the, the, the joint. Um, and this is a bit tricky, but let's do it this way. I'll, I'll just place it here, rotate 3D, give it an axis like so. So these are aligned now. Let's catch that center point, that, that, that midpoint, sorry. Um, this is in the way, so I'll hide it for a bit. Let's see, what's the distance between this and this? Oh, point two, that's perfect. Let's just move it from middle to middle here by point one. So I'm just basically <clears throat> centering it, centering it out. Show again, everything should be aligning properly. Where did my circle go? Oh, it's way too small. Let me just make it like that. Okay, <clears throat> everything seems to be fine. So, moving on, I'll hide the, 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 the screws because these are going to get in the way again. Or actually, I'm just going to delete them. I don't need them anymore. <clears throat> I have copies of them there, so um, that's fine. So I'll group my joint block out. And then I'll, I'll just make a copy. Copy from... How do we... Oh, I know. Since this is symmetric, I'll just copy it from there to niche group again. I'll just copy from that point to that point. There we go. So we have these done. Uh, copying them to the other side is going to be easy. I can just mirror, make sure that copy is set, set to the yes and mirror it 
at a 45 degree angle um, and for the last one hmm, hmm I know if we just make a point there um, and make a copy rotate 90 degrees like that and 90 degrees like that and move it into place perfect fit it's really nice having symmetrical things um, okay moving on let's select all of our joints and ungroup them now now it's time to start why are they still ah crap that's uh i grouped them twice and group again hopefully this time yeah this time it works um so now we have um, a, a bunch of separate parts it's time to merge everything into one uh, so I'll start off by adding the um, positives right so these flaps right here these rectangles right here they're going to be sticking out and they're going to give additional support for the screw so they're a positive and the triangle itself of course is going to be a positive so i'll just use boolean union on all of them like that and then um, i'll subtract holes from 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 these elements uh, from this element because now it's just one element so boolean difference i subtract the screw holes Like this and keep in mind you can design the joints and so on in any way you want in this case I'm just showing you how I would design it for um, perhaps a 3d printed um, screw based joint right so if, if you're planning on gluing these things together or if, if you're planning on just doing visuals with them you can go really fancy with the joints um, you can even do a puzzle joint as well so um, and now for the nuts even though it looks like the nut is going to you know you don't need to do anything with it it's actually going to mess up here right so we need to make this kind of incision in the element for the nut to fit uh, so i'm just going to boolean difference out the nuts like that i really should delete input okay so we have something like this let me isolate this uh this element so now you can see here that there are edges that I don't really want to see. Um, these are kind of ugly. Um, edge, edge right here, it's unnecessary. There's a bunch of edges here that are unnecessary. So the way you can get rid of them, as long as, of course, they are flat, um, two surfaces between them are in the same uh, level, um, you can use merge all faces and ta -da, it's gone right everything's clean so now it's time to make it pretty i guess prettier <laughs> uh, so i'll just uh, use uh, hmm. well first of all these kind of sharp angles um, of the triangle if i were to 3d print this out i really don't want to see any sharp angles because that's where um the the the, the nozzle uh, of, of of the printer will do a fillet for me so i want to have it more controlled um so i'll just use chamfer edge and i'll just give a chamfer distance of point Let, let's give it a one millimeter chamfer distance so 0.1 centimeters for each of these edges 
Is that too low? I think that's maybe... Hmm. Maybe it's a bit too low. Let's do 2 millimeters. Chamfer distance 0.2. That, that, and that. Okay, something like that seems better. And also, um, for these joints here, I'm going to use fillet edge rather than chamfer and I'll also do two millimeters oops 0 0.2 uh, centimeters uh, chamfer radius I'll just go ahead and loop around and select all of the edges like that Mm. Ah, finally, okay. So we end up with something like this, which is kind of nice. Um, next thing is these edges right here. So from experience, uh, when when you're 3d printing something out it's going to shrink warp and it's not it's going to have a tolerance right so you can't have um, these kind of sharp edges here where the nut should uh, fit in and also you can't have a, sh a sharp edge here well you can but it's gonna be trickier fitting things in um, where where the screw should go in so I'm going to use a uh, chamfer edge and something very small, 0 0.05. So that's half a millimeter. We can do even less, 0 0.02. Something like that. Yeah. Just to help the the, the, the nut slide in. That auto saving super. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. Okay. And also the faces here. And I'm go only going to do the inner um, circle because for the outer circle, I'll I'll use a different tool this one as well um, for the outer circle I'll use a not a different tool a different method so if you're using chamfer edge right uh, you can do face edges right so then instead of just selecting all of the edges that you want to chamfer you can just select the faces and it's going to select the edges for you right so it's a very nice little tool yeah uh sure like that and then you just unselect uh edit oh no uh, again face edges let me see oh it's it was control okay again <laughs> face edges Let's loop around. Anything like that. Enter. And then holding down control key, you want to select what you don't want to chamfer. Uh, it gets a little bit convoluted, but you just find the correct angle, a uh, correct viewing angle. So like that. 0 0.02 that means uh, 0 0.2 millimeters give it some time and ta-da chamfer done actually did a pretty good job it's a bit ugly here and there but um, hopefully it won't show that that much uh, you can also do chamfers for the inner part but I, I won't um, this is just to um, 
to explain the principles of it. Um, so now let's let's do some really quick beauty pass for 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 this element. So let's see what we can come up come up with. Um, if I have a line here, I have a line here. And I have a line here, like that, that's right. Hmm. So we can do something like this. Let me just give it some uh, Show selected. So that's our uh, outline that we we drawn. So I can give it a little bit of an offset. Uh, let's say point zero five. No, point one. So one millimeter offset. And here I'm just going to do something really, really simple. Hmm. Some sort of a pat pattern with grasshopper, I guess. So let's see. We have if we have this curve. Set one curve. Hide. So if we have this curve, we can probably do something something fun with it, right? Um, let's try to um, scale it down and down to its center point. So I'll just grab uh, center. So I just take a curve, I grab a center point and I scale it down. And the factor by default is 0 0.5, so it's half the size, right? Uh, but if I do a range and I say that the maximum is zero, uh, sorry, minimum is zero, maximum is one. No, that won't work because if scale is zero, then it's, you know, it, it doesn't have a size. So I'll say that the smallest one that it can be is 0.2 and the biggest one that it can be is, yeah, it's one. It's just the original size. So we end up with something like this and range is 10. Uh, let's do, do five. 10 is a bit much. Okay, so we have something like this going on, and we have six curves. So it goes from the smallest. So this is the first one, this is the second one. That's because it starts counting from point two, and that's the smallest factor. So that means it's the first curve is the smallest. Um, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so. I want to make a bunch of rectangles here. <clears throat> so if I have these curves and I um, shift uh, shift the list of these curves, then here this curve is curve zero, and here this curve should be zero. So that means this one should be not wrapped yes boolean false meaning that it skips the the, the the this one it doesn't loop back okay um then if i graft these together not together but um, if i separate them and separate these and or actually, I don't even need to do that. I think all I need to do is just explode to get all of the segments here, all of the segments here. And what happens? Hmm. 
What happens if we graphed these outputs? And let's just simplify it so that it's easier to understand. Let's see the data tree. 36 branches. Okay, so there's our six initial outlines and we have um, a bunch of elements. Sorry, a bunch of exploded curves in each each um, outline. And that means that since the lift uh, since the list was shifted, that means that this is in branch zero and this is also in branch zero. So these two, if I were to loft, oops, that's the wrong loft. If I were to loft this with this, yeah, it makes a bunch of separate rectangles, which I can then deconstruct or actually just um, get brep edges something like that okay join them up it's going to complain because the last one doesn't have any maybe I should clean it yeah, let's clean it. Call, um, clean it. Since uh, we're shifting this pattern, you can see that like a rectangle gets um, created from here to here, right? So this rectangle gets created. But that means that this edge right here is trying to create a rectangle with something out here, but it's, you know, it doesn't exist and we're not letting it loop back. Uh, so this edge right here, we need to get rid of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just call the list um, and it needs to be the last number. And the trick is if you just use into, uh, list index, if you use index minus one, that's going to be the last number of any list, last item of any list. So like that. So now this one doesn't complain anymore and we can flatten it out. Um, and we have a bunch of rectangle curves. That's a very, you know, convoluted. <laughs> it's a very convoluted way of how to create a bunch of rectangles, but uh, what can we do? And then um, I guess we can just do more patterns with it. So let's do, um, no, not offset. Let's see. Surface. That's not a surface. That's a surface. We could do ISO trim. Hmm. Okay. Let's do ISO trim. That's, that's going to be a fast one. So, uh, for this one, it requires a surface and we already have it here, so we don't need these two anymore. So I'm just going to use the loft. Um, I'm going to flatten this out. Um, and it asks me of a domain, for a domain. So let's flatten that side out. Um, so to create a domain for um, ISO, not ISO, sorry, ISO trim. Um, to, to create a domain for it, you use divide domain squared because you need U and V values. And by default, hmm, hmm, yeah, we shouldn't flatten it. Yeah, there we go. Um, so by default, we, we want to treat every surface individually, right? So, so we need it to be grafted. Um, by default, this is 10 by 10, I think. 10 by 10, yeah. So we need to, it to be much less. Oop. My bad. 5 by 2, perhaps. Okay, so that's boring. Let's do more here. Oh, that's cool. Something like that, and maybe three. 
Okay. Good enough. And I'll just um, offset. Hmm. Should I offset? No. Uh, let's use. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> um, let's extract the edges. Oops. Like that. Join them up into closed rectangles and actually flatten it out because we don't care about the data structure here. Okay, um, so now let's create a pattern. So I will offset each curve. Oof. Let's try offset loose like that. Offset fill, don't know why. That's that's perfect. What if we give it the initial curve as a as a plane? As long as the curve is flat, you can just connect it like that, and it will give you the plane in which that curve is. Um, what if we give it as a plane for the offset? Uh, still complains, but maybe the offset distance is too big. Um, that's one full centimeter, that's a bit much. What if we do 0 0.1? 0 0.01? Okay, that doesn't work. Regular offset. Is that regular? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, that's okay, sure. Um, so let's use that. That's the plane. And 0 0.1 is one millimeter offset. I, I want something in between these 0 0.05, something like that. Ah. Okay, and I want it inwards. And it doesn't work. It's too small. Okay. Instead, let's just scale. That's fine as well, I guess. Scale. Uh, uh, along its center point. You can use pol polygon. Um, uh, this one, you can use polygon center as well. Um, 0.5, nah, actually 0.8, something like that. And let's just move it up. Oh, and this time I actually need to, uh, grab a plane from our initial um, shape, initial curve. And I'll just move it up. Ah, already doing it. I'll deconstruct the, the plane to get its Z value. Or actually, what if we just use the plane um, as a vector? Maybe it's going to automatically give us um, a z value. Oh yeah, apparently if you connect the plane to a amplitude input uh, to, to the, as a vector, it will just get the z axis of that particular plane. And uh, that's very neat. 0 0.2, that's two millimeters. 0 0.1, that's one millimeters, that's perfect. Okay, so we have our original uh, curves, we have our moved curves. So that means we can join them up. But before we do that... Yeah, before we do that, I want 
my pattern to have gaps between the each element <clears throat> so I will do let's do 0.95 so 95% of the size is going to be my initial shape and then I'm going to scale it again and this time I'm going to use point eight and this one will get moved sorry it, if it got too convoluted um, all I'm doing it is basically I have this let me hide everything and go through it real quick basically I have a bunch of rectangles here right so um, I, I get their center points right and I scale it once by 95% or two uh, towards 95%, right? So I make it a bit smaller. So now if I hide, hide it all, you can see I, I just basically make a bunch of gaps, right? And then I scale it down even more to 80% and move it up by um, 0 0.1 centimeter. So one millimeter like that. So again, it's convoluted, but if I were to graft the base curve uh, or base curves and graft the top curves, merge them into pairs, into one, or not one list, but multiple lists of pairs, and loft loft them together that's what we get uh, let's mess around with it a bit maybe this is cooler and this should be less so let's do half a millimeter something like that and then all I need to do is just cap cap holes like this and let's just flatten okay so um, capping just basically gives it a top and the bottom so all of these are closed so now I can control it um, I can see how many tiles there should be right. uh, was it five or more let's do four um, I can control how many divisions each tile has So you can have more or less. Of course, I could mess around with this even more, but um, this is just to, you know, to make a point that you can add a pattern to your tile, to your element. Um, and then I'm just going to bake it out, right? Bake, layer, I'll just group it for uh, to, to, to make sure that it's you know easy to select make it out civil preview let's minimize this so we have our tiles here neat um, show selected I have my element here if I want to I can um, make a copy of it hmm maybe I should I'm just thinking if I should copy it to the other side. Yeah, let's let's do it. Um, is there a fast way to make a copy of it, though? Mirroring, I guess. Well, for now, let's just um, let's just uh, work work with this one because there's one more thing that I want to do. Um, so I want to 
num create a number on, on the style, right? So that I know w once I have a bunch of them, I, I have it, them um, marked marked out, so it's easier for me to kind of um, choose which which tiles which or, or distinguish which tiles which. So I'm just going to create a text. And I'm just going to write element one, e dash one, mm, height one centimeter, and that should be good enough. And font, um, which font should we use? Actually, we might just use Arial black. Why not? E one, something like that. Then I explode it, so I, I get basically the, the outline curve and I can <clears throat> extrude it. Isn't this too big? Yeah, that's way too big scale. Uh, if that was one centimeter, let's do half of it. Yeah, should be good enough. So we have our our uh, curves. I'll just extrude them. Delete input yes, solid yes, extrusion distance at least uh, 0.2 millimeters. Um, so 0 0.02, at least that, but I would suggest like 0 0.04 centimeters, so 0 0.4 millimeters to get at least some you know, readability of it. So now this is definitely not aligned. So what uh, I can do is if I were to rotate, not rotate, sorry, orient three points and I just give it three reference point, uh, just give it three reference points. So bottom left corner, bottom right corner, top left corner. And now three reference points here. Bottom, sure, bottom left, bottom right, and top. So at least it, it's kind of aligned, right? It's kind of in line with, with, the, uh, with the plate. So then I can just use move tool and move it from this point to this point. <clears throat> and kind of wiggle it around until I, I, I see that it fits. Yeah, good enough. E1. Um, so ne the next thing is just to join everything up, right? So just select everything, Boolean union. Everything gets unioned together into one big happy family. Um, and then for, for the element itself, you could fillet it and then mess around with it as much as you want, but uh, sorry for the number itself, but I will leave it be as it is. Okay, so now back to our experiment. Um, show. Sure. So we have our element here and it, we can just make a copy from here to here. So instead of the boring red, you know, traditional marching cubes element, we can use this one. So if I were to, let's recreate the scenario that I've shown in the start. Eh. There we go. We have a bunch of voxels. Well, not a bunch, only eight. We have eight voxels. Let me make them actually trans transparent. We have Image of voxels. We have a point that's there, and we, it's it's basically um, 
active point that we want to wrap around. Um, then we can just take this element, copy, because we, uh, since we know that each voxel will only have one point, and this is the only version uh, or, or the only instance of, of the tile which has one point, you can see all others have at least two points. Uh, then we know for a fact that we'll be only using, for, like for something like this, we'll be only using this element right here. Right, so just make a mirror here. I'll make a mirror here. And I'll make a mirror. Oh, by the way, um, if you want to make a mirror around a flat XY plane, right? That's that's in perspective view. Um, and you try to do it like, like that or like that. It, it's, it's, you won't be able to, but there are two ways of how to do it. One way is the front view, right? You can mirror it here in the front view. Or and the other one, if you want to stick to perspective view, you just choose three points and then you just click, oh, sorry, let me do that again. Um, once you have mirror tool running, um, you choose three point option. And then with three points, you kind of create a, a plane for, for mirroring, right? So you can do that kind of mirroring like that. So we have something like this. <clears throat> Let's see how it looks like without the sharp corners. Yeah, kind of decent. So this is just, you know, one point and all of the joints align and, you know, a screw will go through here and then that will go in here and that's going to be, yeah, all of that works. Always double check, you know, if, if you haven't messed everything, uh, anything up. Um, so with one point, it's kind of, it's kind of boring, right? It's just one point. But once you have something like this, right, it starts becoming interesting because um, 10, 10, 10, because you have, you know, even the first element is something that, um, that has five points, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then if you check the tiles here, None of them have five points, right? So that the question becomes, what do you do then? What happens if, you know, if, if a tile has five points? Um, and we will definitely, definitely <laughs> look into it. But basically when you have a point cloud such as this, it becomes much, much more interesting and you can achieve uh, very, very cool and uh, nice results. So <clears throat> I will be uploading this file uh, to the description, right? So so check the check for the link. Uh, you can download it and model out uh, according to the references here. You can model out any kind of uh, shapes that you want, right? For for each of these um, instances. So. The thing is that we, we need to prepare a library. I have already prepared the library um, right here. And I will be um, attaching it as well to the, you know, within the file. Um, but I would suggest that you definitely <clears throat> try it out yourselves and um, try, try out model, modeling these, these kind of elements. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, next lesson, uh, I'm going to tackle, let's see, this element or maybe this element, and I'm going to show you a completely different, um, like modeling technique or not, not even a technique, but, um, 
a way on how to think about these models and uh, a different aesthetic, I guess. Because here we uh, did what's called a hard surface modeling. Here we'll uh, we'll try to do something much <clears throat> much softer, right? So so keep an eye out for the next video and for now, bye bye.